This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext, along with Governance Knowledge Partner Paul Weiss and contributing partners National Investor Relations Institute and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals. Welcome to this edition of This Week in the Boardroom. I'm T.K. Kerstetter with Corporate Board Member, and we have a very interesting show planned today, and we're going to be talking about building a, an effective board. And joining me to talk about that is Linda Rovervik, who is the, a director and the NAM Gov Chair for HealthStream. And HealthStream is the leading uh, provider of e-learning and research in the healthcare industry. And Linda also serves as the CEO of Consensus Point. And welcome, Linda. Thank you, TK. Excited to be here. The first thing maybe we ought to do is just quickly educate our audience on what Consensus Point is. So why don't you let the audience in on, on what you're CEO of? Great. Uh, Consensus Point is a software company, and we're actually in the predictive analytics uh, area. So what we do is tap the knowledge of employees and customers to provide the C-suite and directors with very valuable information so that you make better decisions day to day. What's really intriguing about it is that we use a market environment much like the New York Stock Exchange where we're able to get real-time indicators and aggregate knowledge so it's accurate, it's faster, and in the end of the day, you're able to improve your business results. Well, um, if you're sitting on a board, I hope you give them some good predictive uh, analysis. We do. So, well, let me ask you a question before we move on to the building of the board. Only because I'm familiar with your background and all the consulting and all the um, marketing work and everything that you've done in the past. Um, what did you find most enlightening when you all of a sudden were on the other side of the table as a director? What was most interesting about that for you? It's definitely a different viewpoint when you're now on the other side of the table, that's for sure. And what was extremely enlightening to me was the amount of work and investment that goes into building an exceptional board uh, and having a high-performing CEO that performs well in that working relationship with the board. It takes a lot of time and effort on both parts. Um, if you think about CEOs, these are individuals who are extraordinary entrepreneurs, and now you're asking them to work for a board. They've got tremendous day-to-day -day responsibilities, but they need to communicate real-time, effectively, and constructively with their board. And so the most important thing you do is guide that CEO and evaluate that CEO. And, on the other side, you've got the board with a finite amount of time with many uh, responsibilities to be accountable to the shareholders, but also needing to provide that guidance and wisdom and evaluation to the CEO. So at the end of the day, that, that was very enlightening to me. There's a, there's a lot of time that goes into making that a very successful relationship. Um, it certainly takes a CEO who's trustworthy who is secure and who sincerely wants their board to be involved. And then it takes a board that is committed, qualified, and understands that they serve both the shareholders and the CEO. Well, that's a good segue into your responsibilities on the nominating governance committee. Um, you have, as the chair, you're going to have to look at board evaluations, board education, recruiting, board makeup all of those things. So talk a little bit about what's challenging about you know, the role of the nominating governance chair these days. Oh gosh, it's guiding the board through all of those activities you just talked about. Uh, every one of them is so important and we take them very seriously. The board evaluation is invaluable to us to help guide us on being a more effective board. Um, but I think the most challenging is um, making sure that we have the right board directors. You have so few. You, know, you just have a finite amount of people, limited amount of people. And so you want to make sure that every one of those individuals brings the proper skills, the proper expertise, the proper diversity to the board. Uh, because if you have a large, or if you, I'm sorry, if you have a diverse group of people, then you're always going to get a better answer. It's proven. Our software proves it. It, it is proven that that diversity drives you to a better answer. 
and that's diversity of thought too. So, um, you know, our, our job on the nominating committee and governance committee is to ensure that we get the right people in the role and then we provide the environment for them to be successful. Well, if you push diversity <laughs> of thought, at least on this show we've always talked about this, you invariably are going to get diversity of gender and race and that kind of thing. So um, how do you sort of, has that been your experience when you, when you look for diversity of thought, you end up getting candidates that fall into those other categories? Yes, it's, it's race, it's gender, it's international expertise, and then you know, what, what we, you, you truly have to decide that you're committed to that in, when you get an opening, that you're going to look for a qualified candidate, the most qualified candidates, but you're going to take the time to also branch out in your search to find candidates of diversity. And so uh, we just went through this process last year. Uh, we, had an extra, we had an opening on our board, and I was extremely proud of our board and our CEO and our nominating committee because we went through a thorough process, took a little bit more time up front, and at the end of the day, um, we found an outstanding woman and an outstanding candidate of, of diversity of race. And I would say to anyone now in the nominating committees that there, especially if you're looking for a woman, uh, there are so many organizations today that can provide those candidates, uh, not to mention the recruiting firms that are excellent. But we went to um, ION, which is Interorganizational Network, and they have over 15 chapters across the U.S., one of which is in Nashville, Cable. And um, so you're talking 10,000 women that they gave our criteria to and came back with qualified candidates. We went to Women Business Leaders, which is a U.S. healthcare. Uh, industry. Uh, again, these groups are focused on getting women into executive positions and board positions. They gave us tremendous candidates from their organization. And then women corporate directors, which now we've just launched a chapter in Tennessee. Um, this is the only global organization dedicated to women corporate directors. And um, you've got 700 women who serve on 850 boards, so they already come with experience to the table around the world and global experience. So it made our job much easier today to find the right people to put on the board. So you wouldn't buy on to the theory of some that says that there's not um, enough qualified uh, diverse candidates out there? No, I wouldn't buy on to that. I, I, I do think that um, it's important to get the right candidate, but I do believe that as, as, as indicated in our experience that when you when you um, look at your qualifications, you look at the skills that you need, and then you decide the, this is the profile of the individual that we need, you can find it. Yeah. Um, it's great to have you here because I also want to ask you what, you what advice you might pass along to somebody who is going to be on a board. Uh, what, would you, what would you advise them so that they got a good start of serving on a board these days? Well, it is the most rewarding uh, experience of your life, but it is hard work. And uh, so you need to take whatever amount of time you think you're going to spend and double it. Because the time that it takes to get prepared for each meeting, you need to review the materials. Before the meeting, you need to do your research. You need to attend all the meetings. Uh, very different, I think, than it used to be. I've been on boards for 15 years, counting private company boards and two public company boards. And so um, it's, it's, it, requires that you are prepared and that you uh, contribute because you're going to be sitting around very um, focused and, and high achieving individuals on that board and they expect everyone to contribute and carry their weight. Uh, you do a lot of heavy lifting in the committees in between the board meetings and so um, I, I would just encourage them to get prepared, look at their calendar, understand that they're going to be um, contributing a lot of time, but the rewards are invaluable. Uh, the intellectual stimulation of being involved and in, on the same side of the table with, with executives of the, um, the brightest minds in the business, I would say, is so valuable and so worth it. And everyone has so much to give. And so it'll, it'll be a great experience. Just uh, get ready to, to make a commitment. Well, Linda, we love to have people on who are sitting chairs of committees to pass along their wisdom and so that people can learn little tricks of the trade uh, that hopefully will be helpful for them in their next 
board or committee com uh, meeting. So I'm thank you for joining us today, yes, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, following Health Stream and Consensus Point, and hopefully they'll do very well. And that will conclude um, this edition of this week in the boardroom. Uh, as usual, we'll be back again next week, and we'll take a look at another critical topic that will be helpful to you as a board member and as a committee member, and we will see you then. Join us again next week for This Week in the Boardroom, brought to you by Corporate Board Member and host NYSE Euronext along with Governance Knowledge Partner Paul Weiss and contributing partners National Investor Relations Institute and the Society of Corporate Secretaries and Governance Professionals.